Good morning, Andrews Elementary, and happy Thursday, happy ELA day, and happy sunny day, finally. I hope you're as excited as I am. I've got my outdoor hat on. I'm ready to get outside after I do my ELA homework, rock out the day. So, let's get started. If you remember last, or yesterday, um, what happened last in the story was that James was inside the peach. He met all of the characters inside of the peach. And they ended up falling asleep in the peach. So I'm curious to see what happens the following morning. Are his aunts going to find him in the peach? Are they going to wonder where he is? Things are getting a little crazy. So let's go ahead and get started. Chapter 14. Okay, We're off, someone was shouting. We're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly, the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake were taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's happening, cried James, leaping out of his hammock. What's going on? The ladybird, who was obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know, she said, we are... About to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great, big, beautiful peach to the land of... Of... Of to the land of... Of what? asked James. Oh, never you mind, said the ladybird. But nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive ants of yours. Hear, hear, they all shouted. Hear, hear. You may not have noticed it, the ladybird went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that has been stopping this peach from rolling away right from the beginning is its thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem, and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybird, our centipede who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away at the stem. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so you won't fall over when we start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it! We're off! We're off! The others cried, we're off! The journey begins, shouted the centipede, and who knows where it will end, murmured the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybird. We are now about to see the most marvelous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There is no knowing what we shall see, cried the centipede. We may see a creature with 49 heads who lives in a desolate snow, and wherever he catches a cold... He has 49 noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for its supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. We may see the sweet little bitty bright hen so playful, so kind and well bred. And such beautiful eggs, you just boil them and then they explode and they blow off your head. Egg new and a noceros, surely you'll see an enormous normal mat. Those sting when it stings, you go in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake or tremor, or nastier still, we may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge. Let's go rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, almost gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion. The whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybird and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and Earthworm and also the centipede, who had just come slithering quickly down from the wall. That's the end of chapter 14. Can you believe it? 
their plan is to take the peach, roll down that huge hill, and get away from Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. Man, must have been awful living at that hill for so many years. I know how they treated James, so I wouldn't want to live on that hill either. I think now we're getting to the start of the real adventure of James and the Giant Peach. So I hope you're going to stay with me the next few days as we finish this story and see what happens. All right, remember, friends, has nobody told you they love you today? I love you all very much. I look forward to seeing you. Hopefully I can see you in your Google Hangouts. Remember, ELA days, some of those readings are tough. Make sure you're rereading things that you don't understand, looking for context clues, and making inferences. All right, those are the three big things that can help you become a better reader. Let's have a great Thursday. Maybe.